So, hi, my name is Philip Lepon. Yep. And today I will talk to you. I will give a short presentation, short hands on presentation about fear. But before I start, I would like to apologize that I didn't have time to remove all my bullets from my slides. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, um, you are me. I, I want to talk to you about um, fear and uh, then. Stop, no, listen seriously. Um, we, will, we, will, uh, we will first take a look at fear from the outside, and then we will quickly take a look a bit inside, and then at the end maybe we will even have a short surprise. So, seriously, uh, the one message that I want you to take with you today is that um, fear, first of all, has a cool logo, and the other one is that um, it's a content management system that is um, perhaps not what everybody else thinks. It's easy, it's cool, and as you know, it's free. So, first of all, anybody here heard of Peer? Who heard of Peer? Who didn't? Well, cool. So, then any of you has any idea who builds Peer? Who builds Peer? Yeah. So, as you probably all know, that Peer is actually built by um, Lucas Rindley, right? Who, who knows that? <laughs> just, just to know. Just to know. Okay. <clears throat> so, it has a, quite a nice history. So, it started with SmallWiki. Anyone heard of SmallWiki? I know, I mean. I have been staying here all, all week long, you know, in this room, and did absolutely no exercise, so it's okay. <laughs> right. So, it, start, it all started with small wiki. This is a nice uh, wiki implementation, object-oriented. Uh, and then, Lucas, so this was, I think, his bachelor project. Right, and then he moved on and to something cooler, and then he implemented Madrid. And then Peer came up as a, an application of it. And this was his, became kind of his master thesis. But afterwards, because Peer is rather cool, um, some more people uh, joined the adventure. And these are here alphabetically. Um, I am also one of them, although I am mostly doing the talking, actually, like always. <laughs> and <laughs> so, this is also probably, so why do I present? Why do I get to say something about it? Because I definitely didn't have the major contribution here. And this is actually, I think, the first time I ever speaking to an audience about something I didn't do. So, now the reason why um, I'm talking to you here is that peer is cool. And it is free. And it's something that a lot of people want, which is a CMS. And a nice one. So, this kind of ties maybe with a marketing discussion. So, we also we think that um, small talk is better served if products that are kicking arrive in the hands of, um, of people and then they after after they see that wow this is really interesting what is it made what is it made of oh small talk oh that's nice let's see what is what is that that one is that um, then we have a better chance of convincing that actually it's not that so this is the reason why I actually invested my time a bit and and here doing this presentation the other reason why I invested my time in here is for private pers uh, purposes because I actually used it in several locations and I will show it to you later. Okay, now during this presentation, I would actually want you, I would like you to be interactive. So if you want, oh, I want to do this, or how can you do this? And I would do my best to uh, answer, and whenever I cannot do that, so probably have a second question, I will just be Lucas. Who's there? Yes, please. Yeah, that's what I want to dispel, right? That's the first thing. So, first of all, we will just take a look at it from the outside. That is, from the browser. You want to just start a browser, and you want, you want to start doing something with it. 
Now, before we start, anybody here knows what actually a content management system is? Right, so I didn't know, and I thought, whenever I looked at content management systems, I thought, well, this must be some ugly looking so uh, site that I never want to use regularly, but it's kind of useful because it has content. So it's not really what it has to be. It can be a normal looking site that allows you to manage that content inside nicely, including the way the site looks. So, let's give it a try. Okay. So I have here Safari open on, on beer. And basically it has a, this is a, a default the default um, application if you download it. And basically it has here just the title of the whole application. It has some sort of a menu of links here, a search box. And in here there is a text and there is a footer here. Okay, and there is the, we also have the Seaside toolbar over there. Okay, now the only thing you can do right now is you can browse for example. There is a blog here that I was preparing for the ESA presentation. Um, there is uh, some short introduction, information site for the introduction, what it is, for the license that is MIT, hands free. Um, uh, the syntax that is used to, uh, to edit the pages. So, okay, that's, that's quite standard. But there's also the possibility to log in. That's right. If I log in, so the password is admin here, and I say log in, then all of a sudden some more things appear here at the bottom. And some more things already appear here in the in the um, in the menu. So we have in the environment and I have user management here. And it's pages. Okay. So the first thing I would actually want to do is, because now we have a cool logo, that I would like to replace the title that is here with the logo. So what I would do is actually, um, if I edit, if I edit the page here, then well, what I see is that there is a title. Well, let's try to change this one. Title with logo. Let's see. And, oh, okay, that kind of works, but I have it here and then I have it here, it's kind of confusing to me. So now the reason why this happens is that actually what you have here, and this is also a link, right? What you have here on top is actually part not of the current page, which you have here, but it is part of the so-called environment page. The environment page is the meta page. So, that is, we should go to the environment that appears here, and now I have the rights to edit the environment because I am an administrator. And if I say edit, then I get a, a nice um, editor with um, this, how the, um, the overall page looks like. By the way, everybody can see what is written there? A little larger would be welcome. Yeah, that would be a bit difficult. Okay. <laughs> I can see it. Okay. So, mm, but one thing we see here is that oh, we have all sorts of things. So here is the header. It's a normal HTML, right? This is the body and this is the footer. And, well, maybe you don't see it, but I do. And there is some here, something here that says plus title plus. Now, plus title plus means basically that um, there is a we want to embed this particular widget that will show the title of the current page. So now let's go back. We say cancel. We don't want to do anything. So what does it mean? Well, actually, it means that if I press, for example, on information, um, right, the, the title still remains the same because that's the title of the whole page. So now if I go in environment again and I say edit, and I say, oh, I don't want the title here. I want, I really want to have just a picture here. So I would like to say logo. I want to invent a logo. 
If I save this, well, obviously there is no logo, so hence it comes in right. Okay, well, if there is no logo, let's see what happens if I click on it. Okay, if it says, if I click on this, it says, oh, add me something. So what can I add? Well, it should be named logo, that's my, that's the suggestion, because that's the name I want to give it. And then the title should be, the title should be, well, a file, because we want to have a logo. And say, okay, add. And then it tells me to choose a file. I choose a file. And I happen to have a, a small logo over here. I say save, upload, and then save. And I have my logo. This is a good moment to clap. <laughs> <laughs> now, basically, let's see what happens, actually. So look, I go back to the environment, and I say I want to edit it a bit. The problem here is that this logo is not clickable. If I go over it, I can't click on it. But I would like it to point me to the root of all pages. So I go say edit. And then I say, well, OK, this is the logo, but I want it to be a link. Now, in Peer, it uses, the, it uses an extension of the Suite um, syntax. So with, you, if you want to do a, a link, you do star, and then you put um, higher than, and then you say what it, sh what should, what it should point to. <coughs> now in this case, we just want it to point to the root, which is the root of all pages. So now I say save, and there, now I have a link here. Right? So, okay, that's quite done. So I have um, a picture, and with that point always to the main page, which is a very good, by the way, um, design um, practice. I think you did angle bracket star instead of star angle bracket. Where? Did I do that? Yeah. You think so? No, let's see. I go back to the environment and I say edit. There is here star. This is part of the HTML, right? Okay, then I say star plus logo, which basically this embeds the picture or whatever I have there, and then it should point to the root. Okay, now actually I showed you a couple of things. So first of all, you can easily uh, edit anything. So in this case, not only did I also, I edit the main page. So by the way, I should go and change the main page. Because I don't like it to be named here with the logo. So I say edit, and then it should not be here with the logo. It should only be here. And then I go say save. So I say that I can edit any page, including both. So both the kind of normal pages, those that everybody can see, and the administrator pages are edited using the same type of mechanism, which is a very small location, if um, I'm not mistaken. And the, the other thing is that you can easily embed something, and it's quite user-friendly in the flow of things. So once you get to know a bit what should you do, what is the structure of things uh, up here, then you can immediately say, oh yes, I want to add something here, and then you add it, and then it actually kind of tries to guide you into what you can do, or what you should do with it. So for example, when I edit the, lo the logo, the, the, or the pointer to the logo, it tells me well, I don't know what it is, and then I add it to the logo, and then it all of a sudden embedded it. And you get it all for free. Okay, now, one more other thing that, so, the usability of peer, was kind of um, one very important piece for us. So we really wanted it to be usable. And one of these things, you know, when you, whenever you're using the uh, web-based, it's this uh, web-based interface is this clumsiness of using the mouse. So I know that we are all trained here, being small talkers, to always use the mouse to do anything, but. In general, when you want to edit something, you really don't want to use the mouse all the time. So for example, it would be really interesting that now that I just want to edit the page, to press Ctrl E, say something here, and then press Ctrl S and have it there. It'd be really nice. <laughs> ah, okay. So the other thing was that the environment is a page. It's just a regular page. 
So the environment again, the environment is the meta page. That is, it's the page that defines how this page should look like. In other words, it's the template, or it's like the template. But it's just a regular page. So just because it's just a regular page, that means that I have to, I can navigate to it, and then I all of a sudden here I have to say, okay, now that you know it's Control E, I press it. Then I'm editing it, and then I can just edit it, and then the result can be seen on all pages. Yes, it's working on all browsers. It is working on all browsers. Not uh, probably the keys are different on Windows, but on Mac it's Control E, and I think on Windows. Um, so now I press Control C because I really don't want it. And so, but what I was saying that I now had to navigate to the environment to change the way something looks. But actually, I don't necessarily need to, to do that. In fact, if I'm on any page and I want to change the environment, I can just press Ctrl D or Edit Design. And now, I just it automatically provides me with the editor for the environment of my current page. So that is, I'm kind, I can be as localized as I want and I can still see the, see the effect, which is not bad. Now, also when I press Ctrl D, I also get access to the uh, CSS design, so to the CSS file. So now, what I would like to do here is that you now the um, I would like to change the the, the colors of the um, of the links. So if I say A, should on, should still to still have no decoration, but it should have color green. Now if I refresh it, it has the green color. Now who likes this green color? Okay, who doesn't? Okay, so we change it back. I, I thought so, but I just wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure. Okay, so that's how it goes. Okay, now I just saved it. But because of the enhancement in uh, enhancements in Seaside 2.8.2 and the uh, extreme caching that they do there, right now I have to press Apple R to refresh it so that it takes the new CSS into account. So that's why I didn't see it immediately. Okay. Yes. Yes. Let's see. If I say Ctrl D, I see it again. But it actually tells me I get two editors here. In fact, one is for the environment, and it says the location of what you're editing right now is this slash environment, which is the page that I would get if I would just click on the normal environment. It's the same thing, only I just get it embedded there. The other thing it tells me is that you also can edit here the, the, the style sheet, which you can find in slash environment slash CSS. And then you can uh, you can edit that. So it's like going there and editing that thing. Now your question was: Is this applicable? Is, does this apply to all pages? Is it shared? If it's shared, shared. right? Okay. Before we get into that point, I just want to point out that um, the file system <coughs> of Peer is a Unix. Not the file system. The structure of Peer is a Unix file system like. So that means the following. It means that I have a root. That's why I pointed, so I, my, my, my link was to slash. That's the root of everything. So it's just a tree of this whole, this whole page. And you can see it here. So right now here it says, right, it's just, it's just a normal localhost 8080 C site slash peer. That's the root. Now if I click on information, which is a sub page, it tells me C site slash peer slash information. The environment is also csi slash peer slash information. So basically it's slash information. Slash environment. Sorry? Environment. Slash environment. Slash environment, right. Now, this the template that we have by default also gives us here um, a hint of, not the hint, but the menu of the everything that is below this main page that is on top. It's by default. So here I have, under the environment, I have all sorts of things. So I, edit, I have here a logo because I just edited it. So if I click on the logo, 
Here it says envi slash environment slash local. Right? So if I click on CSS, this is a file, just a normal file. It's a text file actually. And the pointer to it is slash environment slash CSS. And now that's why when I go to any page and I press Ctrl D, it tells me, okay, then you have slash environment, that's the environment. And slash environment slash CSS is going to be the file that is inside the environment page. And this is what I'm editing at that moment. Now, coming back to your question, how do I know uh, which environment I have in which page? Now, there is another, there is a new, uh, there is another uh, concept here, which is that each thing that you see has settings. So if I press the settings here on the root page, it tells me that the environment is slash environment, and the CSS is slash environment CSS, right? So that's there by default. That's how it goes. Now, let's go inside. Let's say I go into information. And I go and press settings or control T. But there is nothing here, which basically means that I will inherit from my parent. So at this moment, actually, there is absolutely no other environment setting in this structure. So just the root, is, the environment of the root is environment, and that is it. And hence, all pages will, at this moment, inherit uh, this environment setting. Now, that's also the reason why if I go in environment, the environment of the environment at this moment is the environment. And that's why here it says, unable to fully describe the recursive composition because you are pointing to environment from environment and here is smart enough to know that, okay, I should stop somewhere. Right? Okay, questions? No questions. Okay, now, so I said that I have here a blog and this blog has just one entry. I can add another entry. So presentation, so during presentation. Can I ask a question actually? Yes. So, okay, you have nothing you inherit. You put something there that is local and blocks inheritance, that picks up the CSS and overrides only particular CSS, or will you be demo demoing that at a later point? No, but yeah, what's the question? Okay, so, so suppose, suppose I want to inherit most of the CSS, yeah. but simply have different behavior on this page for a small number of elements. So, the, yes, the, the CSS, the inherit, the, in the, the, the rule with CSS is that you add up all CSSs that are on top of you. Yeah, right. Okay. right the environment is just overridden. In yeah. the, in so the I put something in and I get exactly the inheritance that I want. So I simply add the CSS that that particular environment wants. And I can then assign that environment to several pages. Sorry? I do that for one page, and I decide maybe several pages in my CSS want that look, but all the other pages want to stay. So I now want that environment to become the environment of some selected pages. Yes, it's possible, yeah. Right, OK. You will be showing that? No, but yes, this is possible. <laughs> right. that's, that's the kind of thing that I think the person starting with peer thinks, OK, how do I do that? Well, I think the first thing. Oh, okay. Okay. So, well, what I just did here, I just I get the form. I say edit. In this case, it's not just a simple uh, text place, but I get. So I'm editing now. I'm I am adding a post in the blog, and it says here during during ESOC, and I said the current post. Uh, this is the date. Now, actually, if I don't put anything here, and I say save. Okay, I got a new entry here. It says there's a new child for the blog. And uh, the title is during presentation in this suit, and it says that I'm still nervous, which I am. And but when I go to the overall blog, I don't see it because the rule here is. Yes? Why, why don't you spell your name properly, Peter? I, I missed the uh, the circle this accent on your eye. Right, and it's because it's just easier. And it confuses is it, less is it, is it Is it because it's easier or is it because it's easier? Some, some, some nasty technical impossibility? No, there is no nasty technical impossibility. <laughs> no. It's just that it confuses less people. Okay. So, the reason why it doesn't appear on the main blog is that right now I'm editing again and I just have to say I want to publish this. And this okay. is, should be the date. And now I say Control S. And now if I will go to the blog, it will appear here, 
which is nice. So I have here during this presentation, this side, I'm still nervous, posted right under here, but at, uh, and uh, the okay. Now what I would like to see here is actually a summary of this blog on my main page. So I would like here to have I have an empty space, and I would just want to insert there something that just takes all the latest entries from my blog and just insert them there. So what I would just do, I would just every time there's like a practice. Every time I want to add a new component, a new type of something, then I'm usually adding it to the environment. Uh, under the environment page because it makes it more magical. But that's just a convention, you can edit anywhere. So, again, I would like that um, the template for the main page is slightly different than all the rest. But at the moment, I would just want to uh, change the main environment. So, I would say here, Control D, so I'm now editing the environment, and I will say, okay, so what this thing here says is the following. It says that there is here, um, I would like to add in this place a column. So I will give immediate, I will tell you in a second what this actually means. So I have some HTML code to write here. There is nothing um, there's nothing magic about it. And I would say that I would like here to, say, to, to embed the so-called post sticker. And then I say, okay, save. And then obviously there is no post sticker. Yes? No, I was going to just see the text you put in there. I keep the strings or they parse the color in it. Sorry? The HTML and the CSS, the entries that parse as a string, or where is it used as a string, or is it actually parse the color back? It is, it is stored as an after syntax thing. Am I right? right? The HTML one. Not the HTML, right, but the, the peer. Okay, so it's, it's easy the rest to uh, pop up with the HTML uh, in that sense. Right, but that's why you don't want to have HTML in web for regular users, but it's for the administrator, that's just okay. So, now it tells me, okay, both sticker doesn't exist, so what I would do, I would just add a so-called component in this case, so not a page, but I would just add a component. I say, okay, add. And now it tells me, oh, what kind of components do you want me to add? Well, add a post sticker. Okay. I say save. And then it tells me, okay, this post sticker has no block specified. Okay. Now let's edit the settings here. And one of these things says, okay, the source of the post sticker, the ticker will be that thing that will go over a block, and then we'll just pick the latest some entries and we'll post them. And then here it says, okay, I can choose one. I press choose, and now I get into some dialogue. And it says, oh, this is a blog, so you can choose this one. I say, okay, blog. And now I will go and say, oh, I just want to see two posts. And I save it. And boom, it's here. So at this moment, if I go on my main page, I will get a link to during my presentation entry, which is here. And by the way, it also has comes with a nice... Uh, place where you can leave a comment, or and or I can go to the next one, and I still have, I also have here uh, the entry of that, uh, or a summary of that entry, just the first couple of words. Now, I, what I don't like is that I don't want to see this one everywhere on all pages. Do you? I don't want to. So what I would like is actually all other pages should have a different uh, a different environment than the main one. So what I will do is the following. I will just say here in peer, and I will create a new environment for the main. I will call it the main environment. And it's a normal page, and I say OK. So I just edit it here. Now my convention is that uh, I always use an underscore just to know that this is a meta page, because otherwise I won't know. And what I would just do in this case, just to make it easier, I would just go to the main environment, to the one, the current environment. Sorry. And I go now back, and I will say edit and paste what is there, because it should, this should only appear on the main environment. And then, in this case, now obviously all links are completely bogus, right? These are not good links because 
The reason here is the following. So I have here a page environment and main environment. And the code in main environment points to things that should be inside myself, but they are not there. So I'm saying I'm thinking right now, well, okay, let's go here and actually just say, okay, in the logo should be slash environment, slash logo, environment, environment. Is that okay? Yeah, but I told you that I'm nervous. <laughs> so, I will just have all these things. Well, usually, you will have probably, um, so here I'm giving absolute paths to all those things, to all the, the components. And actually, you can also just copy the page to the old environment. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. So, um, in this moment, I basically did a very ugly thing, right? I just had to go there, and ah, that's not that nice. So what I will do is I just press Ctrl R, I will remove this. It worked actually, but I will remove this because well, it's not that nice. So I, instead, I will just go to the environment and I just say, I have your command it says copy. And the name of this one should be main environment. It should be placed under the root. No. Okay. So, when I press there, main environment, this is the URL that will appear. What I want with as underscore is the title, the, what that gets displayed in the web page. So right now, if I edit this page, right here, I would like to have main environment. And now, as Luca said, kind of everything in this case, uh, everything was even uh, duplicated. So it copied uh, everything from one place to another. Now I have two means to um, change this environment or the other environment. Yes? Yes. Right. The only reason why it looks so bad is that it's because of this. Right. It's because it is recursive. Right. So how do you read the page in fact? You don't care about the recursive? No, in this, when you, in, in fact, most of the time, when you're looking at a recursive page, what you should be looking at not is on what is, gets displayed here, because actually you want to get here just so to edit it, mostly, most of the time. But you should look here, so up here. This is what tells you where you are, always. This is the thing that never lies, right? You are in the slash main environment place. And right now, right, because you have all the keys, if I say Ctrl E here, if I say Ctrl E, then I get into editing mode. And this is all I need, in fact. So again, I'm here, the root page, and I say, well, the environment should not be environment, but should be main environment. I can also choose it from there. Let's hope I'm doing it right. I am. And what I would say is that the rest of the pages should not have this uh, thing here, but should have something else. So the rest of the pages should point to just the normal slash environment, not to the main environment. Right, so I'm overriding the environment part in, the, in my sub pages. And I will just also, now I can just press Ctrl D, right? I mean, this page points to the regular environment, and the regular environment should not have a post sticker. Definitely not. Okay, I did something, okay, I don't know what I did. Okay, so now there it is. So if I go now on the main page, I have a post sticker over here. If I go on information, I don't have it anymore. Okay, yes? Can you make it bigger, please? Yes. Okay. Is that okay? Yep. Sorry. could have, but I don't want to mess up with the, um, I just wanted, this was just a pretext for me to show you the, so actually I can just do it. So if I'm here on the main page, I say, okay, control, uh, I edit it, control E, and then I say here, okay, embed uh, main environment, 
slash post ticker. No, no, I'm sorry. Slash. Was it like that? Post ticker? Mm. Yeah. Well, this is the main. This is the main page. Right. So. Oh, right. That's a problem. <laughs> I edit it in the root, right? So, hmm. I don't like it in the root. Do you? I don't. So I will just go to go to it and say, okay, move it. So this is a this is a Unix file system. So you now I say move, and say, okay, where should I move it? Well, put it in the slash environment. And I say move, and now it's there. And if I go here, I have it embedded. Okay, so I could have added there as well, but because I want to play with styles, and usually I don't want to play with HTML in my main page, that's why I don't really put it there. Okay, other questions? Yes. I have two questions. Uh, One. Um, okay. <laughs> um, what about versioning? Are pages versioned so that I can go back to? Uh, so if I press here changes, I can see what have I done. Okay. Right. Uh, so then I can just go back and open what have I done during my... Can I see the difference? Not yet. Oh, yes. One, just one question. Yes. Are your pages persistent? That's a good question. I'll come back to that later. <laughs> yes, just what last... About Sorry? What about scripting? What kind of scripting? What exactly would you want to do with that? I, of course, so what, can we embed JavaScript? Can we use JavaScript? Yes. Do we use JavaScript? Uh, yes. To, to edit JavaScript and develop JavaScript from the quantum management? I don't understand the question. But we, let's say we can take this on, on offline. Well, that's, you can also do that from, uh, yeah, you can add something like that, but not for the, not for JavaScript from the user interface. But you can add a library, for example, in Seaside, and that will do that for you. No. <laughs> Just, I will come back at the end and look for more questions. Okay. Um, one more thing I just want to tell you is about rights. So, now let's see. Actually, so, when I will go, I will go to the main page, I will do, and then I will say log out. When I say log out, now if I log out, I, I could still see this, but I can't see the logo. The reason why I cannot see the logo is the following. So I will log in and explain it to you. So I'm logging in as an administrator, and I say peer, uh, admin peer, and I will just say here browse. So this is a so-called view. So, oh, okay. If I say browse, if I say here browse, what it tells me is the following. So it's like it's like a Unix system type of uh, um, user management. So you have the owner, you have the groups, and you have the other. Well, let's get the post sticker out of the way because we don't really like it here at the moment. So I'll just remove it so that I can now browse. So now I browse better. And so all these little things, so here it's called AAA, CCC, EEE, and so on. Those are actions that can be performed, so commands that can be performed on this particular structure. Right? And then you can remove, allow this or allow that to any specific user um, given the Unix command. So the owner mode here, the owner can do all these things, the group can do all these things, and the others in this case can only view. And by default, whenever you add something, you're adding you, um, the rights are inherited from the parent. So, 
When I edit the logo, I edit it under the environment. And the environment is, cannot be seen from outside. And it's owned by an administrator. And this is the reason why in the environment, the logo also cannot be seen from outside. So if I have your logo, if I look at how the others can see it, they can't see it. So what I would just do now, I say, okay, actually I want to allow people to see the logo, right? Because otherwise, how will they know it's cool? So I, I just went to the logo one, to the logo file, and what I will do is say, I want to change the uh, rights of the others, and I want them to be able to view this one. And then I will say save. And now if I log out, and I go to the main page, something is funny. Hmm. Are you allowed to say that? Is it? Oh, right, because I copied it? Oh, right. I didn't remember the logo. Right. Thank you very much. So I changed the rights of the wrong thing. So now if I say change other, view and apply, and then I log out, now I see the logo. Phew. So, you see, I'm nervous. So, I'm worrying about a bit about the easy part. Yeah. You're still worried about the easy part. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I kind of hope that you I convince you about the easy part. But let's actually see a bit more of the of the internal things because it is actually easy once you know a tiny bit of theory. So it's kind of like saying. Well, try to teach, you know, you go to a kid and they say, oh, let's, I, I will teach you programming. And, you know, there is a class and there is an object and it has a class and there is also a meta class. Do you ever do that in the first half an hour? Well, no. Why? Because it's a bit difficult to get from the first time. Now, you have exactly the same thing happens here. But then, on the other hand, you very, you very well know that if a meta class is also an object, everything is really cool because you have plenty of possibilities. Sorry? The administrator, right? The one that really wants to play with the meta stuff. Not everybody is not the other one. They just say control E, add my entry, I say save, boom, gone. Right? So here is a CMS. Now, just to give you an idea how mature peer actually is and how easy it is to use, well, I just give you some examples. So the Seaside ST is based on peer. Um, this is uh, an organization that we have an object for object or supporting object-oriented programming in Switzerland. It is based on peer. Um, this is the Moose web page. It is based on peer. This one actually, I think, has a lot of content and but, uh, it is um, contributed by quite, I think we have about 30 users here. And then everybody's just adding bits and pieces. And here we have a more complex uh, user management, right? So people cannot change the main page, but they can change their own pages or um, things like that. So for example, here uh, we have a link for the association part that is only uh, only the administrator is able to change that because you don't want people to touch. For example, yes, the question. Uh, so the presentation. So these examples are all from the insiders, right? For the people who know. Right, so this is this what I just demoed now is gonna be a movie and I will tell you a little bit later about that. Okay. No, the answer is yes. A movie. Right. And some more documentation that will come up on the peer web page. Okay. This is ESA just moved uh, to peer. Um, and then it's also we think this is actually a very nice uh, environment for web, for personal web pages. So Lucas is using it, and I'm also using it. And I can't tell you how often, you know, I am updating my web page, and I never did it before. So I'm using it since about a year or so. And before that, I never updated my web page because it was so clumsy. And now it took me maybe like a couple of days to get used to it. But now I'm really happy with it. And really just saying, okay, oh, let me edit this, let me edit that, let me save here, let me save there. It's really smooth. 
I have a side remark. Before, when you were taking peer, you were smashed by the meta interface. This is like if you would learn photo with the meta class diagram. That was that was really the problem. <coughs> this is what he's trying to solve. Right. Yeah. So now the question is also how extensible. So there is peer that comes the regular peer, and then the interesting parts are what can you also get. Um, what other things can you get? And the extensibility is a, main, a major point here. So um, these are just a couple of, of things. And what I would just want to show you, so this one here is light bulb. This is like seaside. Uh, light bulb just shows you a picture in a nice, with nice shadows under it. This is a poll for building polls. You just answer, put a question and answer and people can vote. This, by the way, is done by Philip Marshall. The poll sticker that I just showed, the randomizer. Did anybody notice that actually on the seaside.sd, the logo on top changes, the, the slogan? Yeah. Did anybody notice that? Yeah. Right, this is this that does it, okay? Randomizer. Yeah. Sorry? Right, I'm sorry. Well, I, I just the first page, I didn't manage it. And that you have a search bar by default that just goes and includes metadata that you have there. Um, this is for managing V cards, also done by Fair Marshall. Top feeder aggregates uh, several um, feeds. So uh, this is all, again on the Seaside main page. You have uh, feeds from several people, and there is even a Twitter um, just to take the latest uh, things on Twitter. Now, just to show you quickly, um, I will log in again on this main page. And what I will do, I will just want to add some of the publications that were uh, published on top of, um, uh, around here. So I say, okay, I will add uh, something called publication. It should be a big list. They say add. Okay, perfect. I have here a URL. So this is served already. There is a file there. It's just a normal bibliography. I press here the URL. I say save. And boom, I have it. So there are like uh, two conference publications on it. Uh, one master thesis, a blue cast, some technical report on small wiki, and some other things. Right? And then if you click on any of these, then you get to the PDF and so on. So this is, we think, it's quite a neat thing for all the researchers that never update their web pages. Okay, like me, like I, I never update. <coughs> but it was quite easy, right? Okay. So um, now about the loop, right? I said I will tell you a bit quickly about um, how the loop works in Visual in uh, here, and it kind of works based on the blueprint CSS. So by default, you get uh, CSS. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention SiteZen. This is the bibliography it was done by Damian Um So this CSS is a very, very neat uh, uh, library, the CSS library, it's very neat, Blueprint is called. If you actually, if you search Blueprint on Google, you get it on the main page, which says a lot about uh, its popularity. And the interesting thing here is that it splits and it offers you a great kind of way of manipulating the page. So what you see here are 24, maybe you don't see them, but they are like 24 stripes of, uh, of so basically 24 columns. And if I'm, in, if I'm here and I say, let's, um, edit, let's edit the design, what it says here is the following thing. So it says that the header should span over 24 columns. And inside this one, I should have another column that spawns, so the, the logo should spawn <coughs> over 18 of them. And then I should also have the search spawning over six of them, which is quite neat because it really makes everything smooth. I just place it here, place it there, so for very basic and even more, <coughs> even more complex type of arrangement, this is very, very easy to use. But the scales according to the size of the window? Uh, well, you can also do it like that, but in this case, it is a fixed size. If the size, the reason why it is a fixed size is that it's, it's fixed to 950 pixels, uh, because this is the, it's based on uh, computation of what the biggest size uh, advertisement block should look like. Anyway. So but you, you, we have it now in two sizes, and then we can even, you can even make it relative to the size of the window. It's the same kind of thing here. 
And this makes everything so just playing with CSS, you don't even need to know much of CSS. You just say, oh, I just want to add a column here, a column there, and quickly build a, a table like layout. Okay. So, two things about um, the peer from the inside. First of all, this, how does it look like? So I just, I just added all sorts of different things in there. And these are called structures. In a structure, I can have several other structures. And furthermore, the structures can be of different types. For example, a blog page or a file. And a blog is just a non nothing but a special type of a page because it has some more files to, uh, fields to it. The other thing is that it also can manage the context, right? So, and the context also knows the command that can be applicable on this, um, that you can use to manipulate this particular structure. Um, <coughs> there is always a root, um, there is always a root page, and this is managed by the kernel, which also manages the type of persistency that you want to use, and the persistency persists the commands. So basically right now I say, oh, now I will edit something, now I will view it, now I will change something else, I will move it there. So these are all commands that are remembered, and this is what the persistency is doing. Okay, now here there is nothing about Seaside. Absolutely nothing about this. This is just a general, um, simple and general model for just storing data. The seaside part come here. So we said a structure has an environment. This is seaside. This is just for, this is like the template because this is needed. But you see how cool it is because nothing is needed from the main, um, from the main, just, just to be changed in the main model because it's really neat and simple. You, you, you just have this picture in mind when you're doing something, and you will be much quicker in getting into, uh, into using here. And the other thing is that you can view um, a context in several ways. So I showed you that I can just view it or I can browse it. And then I you saw the, do something else, a different type of view of the same structure. So then I saw the rights, for example. And the other thing was that in, in Seaside, because you, have, you also have a component that can do anything, including any Seaside applic application. So I showed you PostSticker is one of these. It's a special Seaside application that knows how to deal with the a peer blog. Questions? Just one. But no, you can just embed the, for example, on the Seaside web page, there is a counter example that is embedded as it. So, um, the nice thing about peer is that everything is described by my grid. So, then you can make use of the rendering that comes together with it. So, all those forms that you have there are just my grid based. So, you, you want to build your own component, your own widget. It's really nice and easy. You just focus on that, write down the descriptions, and that's it. Quite fast, actually. Um, so to answer your question, any Seaside application can be embedded, uh, can be a widget. So now if I'm here, I go back to the root. I say what I want to do is I want to add a counter. The counter should be a component. Let's say add. And I just, now it, in this list, I also get the list of uh, Seaside application, this is the counter, say save, and this is the counter, right? Nice and easy. Okay, so you use here, you get Seaside. Okay, now, persistency, because I was asked, so my page and Lucas' page and all, most of the pages that you saw are running on, uh, they, are, they have an image-based persistence, so there's like a cron job in there that saves the image from time to time. There is also um, a file, so for really, um, real emergencies, there is also, every command is actually also stored in the so-called transactions of takes that file. And you, you can also have it running uh, using a gemstone-like persistency. You can replay the transaction Not at the moment, but yes, that will be the idea. But in case, of course, that will be impossible. Okay, so what I want to tell you is that peer is um, so it's a content management system, it is easy, my opinion, just, take, just give it two days, right? 
Just give it two days as if you know, as if you would give small you would as if as if you would ask somebody to give small talk two days. It's the same type of thing. And it is free. And just to tell you a tiny bit about cool, if I get like two minutes, do I get two minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about cool. You promise a surprise, huh? I promise a surprise, but only if you want it. I can stop here. Yeah. No. No. Give us give us a two minute surprise. We want the two minute surprise. <laughs> okay, okay. So I, we said, so I, I showed you a bit of peer from how it looks from the browser, how it looks from Squeak, and now I will show you how it looks from this. Okay? Uh, well, if you don't, who, know, who doesn't know what this is? <laughs> we'll better oh, cool. admit. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, this is a so called iPhone. So, the iPhone is not good, it's just cool. And we said it's about cool. Right? So, the reason, the reason why we have it is that both me and Lucas have an iPhone. And we just wanted to be able to edit our pages in iPhone, with the iPhone. So, in here, basically, there's just a browser. At this moment, it's just uh, connecting to localhost 8080. Can you see? Okay, there is a special entry, Seaside, so it's IC peer, instead of directly peer. And here <coughs> you just have, you can right now just browse the page. So in this case, for example, I just went into information and I can say, okay, edit, for example, I can edit it. I say, don't. And I can just play about you know, from my iPhone at this moment. Can you remove the content? Sorry? Remove the content. The content. Actually, I don't know why this didn't happen. Good. Hmm. So it's a surprise for you as well, right? This is a surprise <laughs> for me as well, right. But I promise you that if you download it in one week, you will get it working. <laughs> so yeah, that was a surprise. So what is the principle do? Okay, and what I just wanted to say here is that with uh, just to have it working on, on the iPhone, basically this is the whole code that was needed. I'm not expecting you to read it, but it's about 100 lines of code. Okay, Ex making exception of the JavaScript library. So this is amount of code that was really needed for uh, just from a small point of view. And the reason for this is that you know you have Madrid and then you can just nicely render it here, there, and just some gluing code was actually needed. And this is literally some days uh, worth of effort. Mm -hmm. The principle of so um, yeah, there is a new uh, there is a new entry point in peer that you subclass and you have a different type of browsing. So you just uh, the render content is a bit different. That's it. Yes. Um, just to edit. Uh, here I already have the actual peer features. Yeah, so on. You can do all the commands. So the idea here is to have all the possibility to have all commands. So add, edit, to be oh, able to do anything. We also have like different view on the page to be browsed with the iPhone. Uh, yeah. As a user, not as an administrator. Yeah. This is not an administrator, this is like the user. If you get to the entry point, this is what the user should see. You, you see of course, like the without, without the meta pages, right? Oh. There's a spot. I don't know why this is. So the count was missing because you. Because it's somehow the, there is the a problem, problem with the connection. No. And because of the rights? Okay. Are you browser? Let me see actually. So I can log in here. And I say admin. So I think I was not logged in. I say done. And then log in. And I still don't see it. So yeah, there is a tiny problem. But yes, you you this is because as an, as a user, you can still normally look at uh, at your um, you can still normally look at peer. That would be just how P looks like on your page. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. If you, if you write it, but, uh, 
but for, for as, the, as the user, they just want to go and quickly go through the content management system, just the structure, then you get the other type of um, the other type of navigation that is made for the iPhone. The information. So here, if I press view, for example, here if I press view, then I get that. So this is a bit more optimized. If I go to introduction, it's a bit of a different type of layout. That was the question. Other questions? Yes. Yes. So I didn't see enough from Scribble to be able to compare because it was just a demo. But actually, it would be interesting to look at that. Um, however, Lucas, you want to say something? Else? Um, however, they, first of all, they are implemented on top of two different platforms, right? And second of all, we know how this model looks like. And we really like it. We think it's really small location. Right. So, we, but we did exactly. So, we, there is no reason why. So, at this moment, I would totally be biased to say anything as a comparison between the two. So, well, where is the special? So, let's let you know that and there is a, it has a nice logo too, and it's usable. It is, we know that it is usable, so we spent time in making it actually usable. Uh, it was, it's already out there for some time. Uh, we saw all those sites that are now working with it, and they're nice looking sites too. So, that is. I, I don't. I can't say anything. I, 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 just, I see. I see. Well, so I guess in the end it depends on anybody what they actually want to do. We at this moment we presented you what this can do. The choice is totally yours. And but I will not say anything negative about that. Right. So, right. Right. Yes. When I attach documents uh, to a page, uh, yes. they get the text, so they are included in the search. Yes. Yes, they are just, uh, you saw that they are just structures. No, no, no. I mean, when I attach a file. Oh, if, if you want to, to the index inside? No. <laughs> Except, if, yeah, no. That was the question, right? If, if, I, index, if I index the PDF. For example, yes. No. <laughs> One of the main advantages is going to be that you can extend it with Caesar to get all the benefits. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Right. Stuff that you want to add into it, uh, you get to use all of those benefits. And anything that you've already done, you can plug in. Right. Don't have any questions. So, if you want to find out more, you can go to lucasvengeby.ch slash smalltalk slash peer. We will definitely uh, update the web page and add more documentation. As promised, there will be videos with uh, demos and we will grow the user-oriented uh, documentation. We certainly welcome uh, feedback on the mailing list. So feel free to join. So thank you very much.